You're listening to the Get Off My Soapbox podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We want to make the world a better place and share life-educated opinions and have discussions on various topics. Welcome your host. He is a jack-of-all-trades, master of none, and always wants to know, how's your integrity today? Mad Morgan! It's Wednesday night, folks. Hey, thank you for joining me. This is episode eight of Get Off My Soapbox. I'm your host, Matt Morgan, and thank you for joining me this evening. Today, this Wednesday, this hump day, yes, it is hump day. It's middle of the week. And if you caught my morning show, you know I mentioned to you that, hey, we're on a downward slope to the weekend. Hopefully, it's going to be a good weekend. I'm not sure what I'm doing this weekend. I think I got something planned, but it's kind of up in the air at this point. How about you? Do you have anything planned for this weekend? Are you looking forward to it? So before I get too much into things, let's just discuss what are we going to talk about this evening well today's topics are pretty exciting and some of you will probably be captivated if you looked at our twitter at mad soapbox and saw the actual subjects or topics for today this is probably why some of you are here because you actually saw the topics and you're like hey i want to know what that's all about because those are three pretty big names and that's probably going to be an interesting show and possibly it is so let's get on with this our topics today are only fans TikTok and Pornhub. Doesn't get much more exciting than that. All three of them are actually somewhat related. And that's what we're going to discuss this evening. So thank you very much for joining me. And hey, why don't you check out getoffmysoapbox.com for more information on this show of Get Off My Soapbox and also our daily short format show, roughly about, uh, I'd say at this point, five to eight minutes long every morning, Monday to Friday of Soapbox Daily. Hey, check that out. Monday to Friday, if you'd like more during the week, we'd be happy to hear you, happy to see you. I'd love your feedback. If you uh, would like to could send more in, by all means, you can find out our contact information on our website at getoffmysoapbox.com. Also, go over to Twitter, send me a DM, reply to the posts. I'd love to hear more from you. I've been getting some really good emails lately. I've been getting some really good DMs, some really good feedback from people, and I really do appreciate it because, hey, I love being here for you. I have a passion to do what I do. I like being here making these episodes for you. I'm glad to hear that you are liking it. And what I encourage you to do is share it with everybody else. Share it. Share the episodes. Get the word out about us. Tell people about us. Get some reviews because people see the reviews. They need to actually see a lot of this stuff. And a lot of them don't. I'm not going to break your confidentiality by posting emails and posting DMs you sent me. I don't need to do that. You and I both know, and that's good enough. But hey, if you leave a review, go over to Good Pods, go over to Podchaser, leave a review. It'd be great. As I said, get off my soapbox and also the Soapbox Daily Podcast. I greatly appreciate that. That would mean a lot to me. It helps get us out there, helps get us up in the ratings, helps people learn about us, and that's what we're all about. We're about helping people. So that's a lot, but let's get on with it. Here it is Wednesday. Okay, for the Wednesday, here we go. Let's talk about the first one, OnlyFans. Now, let's get into basically OnlyFans, what the whole reason was for it. So OnlyFans... By description, is an internet content subscription service based in London, United Kingdom. The service is used primarily by sex workers who produce pornography, but it also hosts the work of other content creators such as physical fitness experts and musicians. Okay, fair enough. They say its main goal of OnlyFans is to help content creators and artists monetize their content while developing authentic relationships with their fan base. This basically means the platform was created to let users post content behind a a paywall, which fans have to subscribe to for access. OnlyFans was launched in November of 2016 as a platform for performers to provide clips and photos to followers for a monthly subscription fee. Well, as I opened up this segment, I mentioned, yes, OnlyFans has been pretty much bombarded and overcome by, well, sadly, sex workers and the like for pornography. That's pretty much it. It just became... Unfortunately, although it had the purest intentions of becoming something that was pure and harmless and meaningful, has now become just another sex site, which since the internet was born, we pretty much just had tons of. The intention of OnlyFans was for fans. So fans of cosplay, fans of musicians, fans of fitness people. Basically, they can post photos and videos to share behind a paywall so people can pay for additional content based on different levels. That was the intention. But like always, unfortunately, the sex industry decided to completely terrorize it, take it over, just another 
platform which they've decided to infest. The only way I can explain it is infesting. The OnlyFans concept was great. The model was great. It was very excellent. And the name, you couldn't ask for a better name. But unfortunately, in today's world, sex sells. It's sad, but true. Sex sells. And I don't know who's to blame more. The fact that people have a addiction to sex and addiction to nudity, addiction to all this stuff that they pour thousands upon hundreds of thousands of dollars into feeding this fetish of theirs to be able to engage in this stuff or the fact that the people that post the content really don't think about the consequences. Like if you caught my show earlier on today, I was for my soapbox daily, I mentioned about two phrases, basically don't burn that bridge. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, it was only this morning, <laughs> but I would have to say that the don't burn that bridge makes the most sense in this particular case. If you post content that's lewd out there, you are burning bridges for opportunity down the road. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But some people would say, well, hey, Mad Morgan, I don't care because, well, you know, I make hundreds of thousands of dollars. I make millions of dollars. What does it matter? I don't care. I won't need another job. I won't need to go anywhere else. I won't. I don't care what people think. I am rich. OK, what if you lose it? And, and how do you expect people to look at you differently? I understand desperate times call for desperate measures. I understand if you are down and out and you have no other choice but to Take yourself into sex work, take yourself into taking off your clothes and go that route because you have no other options and no skills in, in anything, then fine. It's a sellout. It's a cheap way to do it. And you know what? This is my opinions. A lot of people are not going to agree with me. I've gotten a lot of pushback when I've actually started blocking people when it comes to Twitter and other platforms that there's just an, an invasion of nakedness and sex stuff. We don't need this. Yes, it's a quick, easy sell, but it's a cheap, easy sell. Anybody could take off their clothes and make money. There is somebody that is interested in it regardless. It doesn't matter who you are. The cheap, lewd way of doing it is a cheap way to make money. So OnlyFans got completely bombarded. They did. They got completely bombarded. And the thing is, I know sex and sexually related stuff is in forever age old profession. I understand that. But... There's a time and place for it. Keep it where it belongs. Don't infest every platform. Don't infest everything else, especially for something that has kids on it. OnlyFans, they have a favorite, a favorite actor that they like, and, they, and the, the actor has an OnlyFans account. And so they go to the OnlyFans and look at uh, these lewd dressed and half naked people. They came there to see their guy who plays one of the superheroes or girl that plays one of the superheroes they like or whatever. And they have to be bombarded with all this lewdness and sexual and everything else. Honestly, come on, folks, you know, keep some innocence in the world. Unfortunately, OnlyFans, number one thing, it OnlyFans to me, when I hear that, I just think, hey, naked people for money. That's all I think about. And I'm sorry, but there's a lot of majority of other people that feel the same way. Hey, if you don't agree, by all means, shoot me some feedback on Twitter at Mad Soapbox to this episode. I would love to hear your, your views on that. But when somebody says, oh, yeah, I got OnlyFans, I'm like, whoa, you're taking off your clothes? Really? You put video up there and have sex, too? When somebody tells me they have an OnlyFans, it's automatically. Now, that might make you might people might say, well, Mad Morgan, you're just arrogant and ignorant and everything else. You're just you're just wrong thinking. What's wrong with you? People work hard. People work hard at taking off their clothes and performing sexual acts. Don't realize it was that difficult. But unfortunately, OnlyFans has just went down downhill down. And there's don't get me wrong. There's other platforms, but OnlyFans seems to be at the top of the heap. There is other fan websites out there that are putting out. Guess what? Similar content. As soon as all the, the nudies and, and the sex workers and pornography and, and all that find those other platforms, they invade it, invade it, corrupt it. Boom. Easy money for them. There's a place for it, folks. But OnlyFans was basically capitalizing on. Well, OnlyFans doesn't care, frankly. I mean, they might say, well, we try to remove lewd content, naked content, blah, blah, blah. I think there was some law suit or some argument that went on about that at one time, if I'm correct. And I'm not sure if they're quote unquote trying to remove the lewdness and the nakedness and everything else, but I really doubt it because they get their commission anyway, so they don't care. They might just for press say, oh yeah, we're, we're trying to remove that. But then of course, you know, the pornography workers and sex workers and everything else put up a fight saying, well, it's you know, 
that's uh, curbing my freedom of expression and my artistic side and blah, 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 blah. Every other play on words you can actually win an argument. It's, I'm sorry. I, I've known people that were working in the sex industry. I know people that were working as strippers. I know people that worked in different areas of pornography and sex work over the course of my life. I have, and I still do. And there is a good portion of them that treat it as what it is. It is a job. It is a profession. It's two different hats. They wear the hat for work and then they have a hat for the rest of their life because they want to keep a divide between the two. They don't want their whole legacy to be known as this is what they did on their back or spread eagle or showing every inch and square inch and every bit of you. They don't want that to be their legacy. They don't want that to be how they are remembered, unfortunately. They just... Well, no, it's not unfortunate, but they just don't want that to be what they're remembered for down the road. So keep a degree of separation. And some of them do a really good job. They stay out of the addictions. They stay out of the drugs and alcohol. They stay out of the part of that industry that is corruptive, that corrupts you and completely ruins you. But unfortunately, that doesn't stop people from trying to make an easy buck and invading places like OnlyFans. But it is the way the world is. It's all about exposure. It's all about you know, getting the name out there. And the sex workers go in the pornography industry goes into other areas as well. OnlyFans branches out into every single social platform in an innocent sense. And then to the tempting part of, hey, if you want to see more, go over to OnlyFans. It branches out into Facebook and to Instagram and to a whole bunch of other platforms as the here's a little bit of a temptation and then come over to OnlyFans and give us money. Here's a good question, though, I have for people that subscribe to OnlyFans, and, and I'm, I'm just wondering about this. Once you've seen one person naked on OnlyFans from head to toe, why would you keep giving them money each month? What do you think is going to change? <laughs> I'm just curious. What do you think is going to change? Once you've seen one naked body, how many more naked bodies do you need to see? Once you've seen one lewd act of sex, how many more do you need to see? It's the same thing, just different shapes and sizes and colors and dimensions, but it doesn't change. But furthermore, I don't know why you give somebody a monthly fee to, to try to potentially, what, see them in different outfits, to see more of them, to maybe you miss that little pimple that was between their left butt cheek. I don't know, but I just don't understand why you would pay more once you've seen the full package. It just doesn't make sense to me. But hey, that's just me. What do I know? <laughs> I, it's not my cup of tea. You know, don't get me wrong. I like naked people. Great, awesome. But it's not something I seek out. I'm happy with my life. I'm happy where I've been. Maybe when I was younger, sure, I looked at the Playboy magazines. But in today's day and age, we're bombarded with this. We're bombarded with so much stuff, so much social media, so much crap out there. It's just bombardment, bombardment, bombardment. It, your brain doesn't have a chance to settle down. It really doesn't have a chance to settle down. It's reeling because of all this stuff coming at you. And speaking of which, let's go over, because I want to put only fans in the toxic category of corruptive online social networking and platforms because it has, I said, been infected by pornography and, and then sex workers. Don't get me wrong. I have nothing wrong with them. Live your life. As long as you're doing it by your choice. Great. But try to keep it where it belongs. Don't invade the innocence of youth, please. All right. So let's go on to the next toxic part of the internet, which is of course, TikTok. Wonderful TikTok. Now, what's the deal with TikTok? All right, so TikTok, known in China as Du Yin, I think that's pronounced as D-O-U-Y-I-N, is a short-formed video hosting service owned by Chinese company ByteDance. It hosts a variety of short-form user videos from genes like pranks, stunts, tricks, jokes, dance, and entertainment with durations from 15 seconds to 10 minutes, which actually that's new because for the longest time, TikTok was only like one minute and then it went up to three minutes. And I guess now it's up to 10 minutes. I mean, TikTok originally started. Okay, so they started building an app that people could ex could use to express themselves first. All right. They're building an app that people could use just basically to express themselves. TikTok could be an interesting preview of other platforms that could provide people with a framework to create. Okay, but it sounds innocent and like it has a good intention. But what is the real purpose of TikTok? 
Well, TikTok is a social media platform for creating, sharing, and discovering short videos. The app is used by young people as an outlet to express themselves through singing, dancing, comedy, and lip syncing, and allows users to create videos and share them across the community. Wow. Did they have a good promotional PR person? Oh my, I tell ya, Jesus Christ on a cracker. That's amazing. The write-ups for TikTok are just, and you know, when you have uh, Gary, I want to Chuck, or Vander Chuck, uh, but it's backing this up. Like he always puts a positive spin on stuff, but then he himself is questionable with some of his actions and his words. But you know, he supports, will be promoting it and says it's so great. So it must be awesome. Let's be realistic, folks. So TikTok has been kind of the, I don't know, questionable platform for the longest time. It's went through a bunch of conspiracies, which may have some validity behind it over the years. I have yet to see anything good come out of TikTok. To me, TikTok, in my opinion, again, in my opinion, is basically just a cesspool of pointlessness. It really is. When my 15 year old daughter has to turn around and say, oh, well, I saw this on TikTok and she wants to try something stupid. The first thing I say to her is, you saw it on TikTok? Yeah, I want to know what it is before you do it. Because there's been, unfortunately, a lot of harmful stuff on TikTok. What they refer to as TikTok challenges. And let's get into that. TikTok challenges. We've had everything from maiming people. People have been name maiming themselves or hurting themselves to doing really stupid, outrageous stuff because some sadistic mofo posts some video selling it to kids to promote them as a challenge, to challenge them on, to do these stupid things, which either ends up making those kids hurt themselves or fatally it takes their lives. But TikTok doesn't do anything about it. It says it does. But TikTok's is still growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. Now TikTok's trying to stay on the air because it's trying to compete. But hey, it's owned in China and it's untouchable. So it really doesn't follow many rules and regulations. TikTok is basically, it's a free for all. It really is. What's the latest thing I heard? And unfortunately, um, for my work, what I do for a living, I work in security and specifically high tech security. And unfortunately, the latest as of today, the latest TikTok challenge is the calling in bomb threats to schools. Wow, this is the latest TikTok challenge. How many bomb threats can you call into schools? That is absolutely pathetic. What kind of sadistic motherfucker, excuse my language, but what kind of cretin comes up with this idea as thinking this is fun, this is cool, and this is so amazing and amusing? Do you realize what you put people through? Do you realize the resources you pull away for your stupid prank? For what? For bragging rights? That's pretty pathetic. Talk about uh, having no legacy. Can you imagine? Honestly, now let me just tell you something. What I know about the security industry is, is that all these tools that you think, and I'm talking to those idiots that called in bomb threats to schools recently or ever. One thing you have to realize, this technology that you hide behind that you think is so amazing, that is keeping you hidden. There's counter technology to that, just so you know. And I'm speaking from experience professionally. Yes, professionally. I am licensed and certified in these particular areas. So yeah, this is where I tilt my hat to that one. Yes. And there is counter, counter equipment and resources and tools. So as much as you think you're being hidden, people, you are not being hidden and it's going to catch up with you. Be expecting that knock on the door because as much as the stupid prank you think is really amusing, it's not. It is hurting people. It is causing a lack of resources in other areas. It is causing unrest. And this is not cool. People have busy lives. People have more important things than to deal with your immature, stupid pranks, calling in bomb threats. Now, think about this for one second to those idiots that are following for all these TikTok challenges. First of all, get some freaking common sense. Put your logical hat on. Like, don't be a freaking idiot. Like, use some common logic sense. Like, get your brain out of your ass or something. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how people could not look at something and go, hey, maybe this is a bad idea. How do people not see that? How do people not say, hey, maybe this is a bad idea. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe I, like, for some, all the challenges I've heard from TikTok, maybe I shouldn't carve a whale on my arm. Or, or maybe I shouldn't pull my teeth out with appliance or tools or something like that. 
Sorry, I should have given you a heads up warning on that one, but there's been some other stuff that I'm not even going to mention. So just fair warning on that one. I'm not going to go any further, but there's been some pretty gross stuff. And I think what's stupider is that unfortunately people fall for it. And sometimes people don't know any better, either because they're mentally not advanced enough to know that it's wrong or two, they're too young to know any better and they engage in this stuff. Honestly, I think TikTok should be regulated. Now, am I blaming the platform? No, again, just like OnlyFans, the platform at first glance looked like it was designed innocently. I mean, originally it was called Musical.ly, Musical.ly. Musical.ly, that was what it originally was called. It sounds a little more innocent, but doesn't have the same ring to it. And I guess the idea of the platform made sense. And it's, in its innocence, it was. But now, like always, people want their 15 seconds or 15 minutes of fame. I'm not sure which it is. Some are happy with 15 seconds of fame. Some are better. They want, you know, 15 minutes of fame. But everybody wants to be on the spotlight. Everybody wants to be seen and be known. Not everybody, but there's a good portion, especially the younger generations. Everywhere from your kids, into your teens, into your early 20s. Hopefully they smarten up and realize in their mid-20s that it's stupid and move forward. But not everybody does. And people want their seconds of fame. The class clown is just loving TikTok because they get to put all their stupid pranks and ideas out there. But it's the sadistic mofos out there that put these challenges out there that hurt people in so many different ways. It is the stupidest thing ever. Give your head a shake. Get some professional help because there's something wrong with you people out there. TikTok, unfortunately, I don't see it getting any better. It's trying to compete. It had a really good market with the short videos, but then Instagram started doing the short videos and other platforms started doing the short videos like YouTube. And so it was very difficult for TikTok to actually keep that market. So now <laughs> when everybody's copying TikTok, now TikTok's trying to copy everybody else. So eventually you're just going to have a whole bunch of platforms that are going to do the same thing and it just all depends on where you decide to actually put your face and do your stupid pet tricks. That's pretty much what it comes down to. But do not, do not try to sell bullshit on TikTok like it's factual. I doubt you're really gonna find anything that's credible on TikTok. I wouldn't trust anything on TikTok that I saw, frankly. It's so manipulated, it's so false, there's no regulation on it. I wouldn't trust anything that comes out of it. I've had some stuff come across my way that people have told me, oh, I saw it on TikTok, it's gotta be factual. I'm like, because you said it's on TikTok, I don't believe it. And I don't think anybody else should do. I think TikTok should emphasize this is for entertainment purposes only. And you know, don't do this, this or this. This is what I think. I fr frankly feel that's what they should do. They should regulate it first of all, but it's China. And it all depends on which side of China it's on. The dark side or the light side, because Oh, let's get back to the conspiracy theories when it comes to TikTok. And there's a couple that I've heard, which they could be conspiracy or they could be factual. So think about this. We're in a generation where we don't care about Big Brother anymore. I know it's an old term from the boomers time and Gen X, whatever. We don't care about Big Brother anymore. We've invited Big Brother into every parts of our lives, every square inch of ourselves, and we just put it all out there. But think about how much time you put out there. Think about security measures, face recognition, you know, complete scans of who you are, your identity, all that stuff like that. Now, if you have an un unregulated platform like TikTok, who's to say they can't just collect identities and you're freely giving it to them because you want to be famous or you want to be a star or you think you're going to make millions of dollars by putting yourself out there. But are you really? Because a very small percentage of people actually make it as influencers. It's the only generic term I could give is influencers. You know, like Mr. Beast, Pootie Pie, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can go over a handful list of people that have actually succeeded in making themselves a name and making some money off this. But it's a very small percentage. You got to understand on YouTube alone, there's a hundred, a million people creating videos, if not more. And that's just one platform. Think about how many people are in the world. Eight billion people. If I had to take a rough guess, I would take one billion people and say that one billion people easily are making some form of social media content. And a good portion of them are probably on TikTok. So think about how much junk you have to go through. Think about how much stuff other people have to go through in order to get to you. And you can take the easy route out. Yeah, you can show some flesh and put some sexy outfits on and you can just sell yourself out and just take the easy, cheap way, which a lot of people do. And then they get an OnlyFans account and, you know, they make some good money, but that's your legacy. 
And good luck anybody seeing you any differently than how you've presented yourself. Because how you present yourself online stays there forever, first of all. One, stays it's forever. Nothing gets removed from the internet. I don't care what you think. There's a backup somewhere. Somebody has a backup of something. There is an actual internet archive out there. So what you put out there, it's staying out there. I don't care if you pay a service. I don't care if you do whatever you try to do to remove that content. It's not going to be removed. It is existing in the bowels of the internet. It will still exist. So how you present yourself, it's going to follow you. Remember that burning bridges comment I made earlier on, you know, from my morning show of uh, Soapbox Daily? Yeah. You're burning bridges by doing these lewd acts, by doing this stupid behavior on TikTok videos, by doing all this crap. It's not bolting well for you down the road because guess what? The more that content gets out there, the more you get known, the more it follows you. It follows you like a bad rash. You just can't get rid of it, especially on TikTok, which is probably one of the number one platforms they check. Look at the big names, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch. These are all platforms that any potential employer is going to look any person in a professional capacity is going to look at your social media presence when they're trying to do any serious business with you whether it be a job whether it be investment whatever the case may be it's there good luck because if people that win the lottery can lose the money in a year and we're talking tens of thousands or millions of dollars like i don't i've heard people that have won 50 million dollars and lost it in a year you cannot tell me that if you manage to make that kind of money somehow as a social uh, media person, an influencer, as a creator, and I don't call taking your clothes off creating, if you make that kind of money, don't think that you can't lose it fast. If people can win the lottery and win it, uh, lose it that fast, chances are you too can lose it that fast. You still got to watch yourself. You still have to watch your behavior, right? So you got to be careful about the bridges that you're going to burn. And that, those are bridges you're going to burn by the actions you do today. We'll follow you five, 10 years, 20 years down the road, and that will become your legacy. And that's how you will be known. So if you're in desperate times and have to do desperate things short term, yeah, that's okay. You can still have time to recover. But taking the easy route because it's easy, nothing's easy. There's always a fallback that's going to come back on you. All right. So TikTok. I think they're good information gathering. I think they're identity gathering. I touch it with kid gloves. I'm very hands off. I will see one of the two of the videos and, you know, I try to avoid putting myself on there only because, well, yeah, I, I think it's risky. I really think it's risky. I think it's not worth the backlash that's going to follow. And furthermore, for those idiots doing these challenges, one, the idiots that are putting out these challenges, get some freaking help. Stop hurting people. Stop. I don't know where your twisted mind thinks that these challenges are amusing. The innocent challenges are fine. They aren't going to hurt people or aren't going to maim people, aren't going to cause lifelong issues with people. Fine. Those challenges are okay. The fun ones. The, hey, can you do this? Can you touch your nose with your both hands at the same time? Whatever the case may be. Those challenges are okay, but not these other harmful ones. And not these calling and SWAT and swatting people, or calling in bomb threats or anything else. Think about you calling in a bomb threat and those police officers, and emergency crews were needed to save somebody that you loved. Same, save somebody that you loved, a family member, somebody that you held dear. And because they were dealing with the bomb threat that you called in because you thought you were so, so clever, that person that you cared about and loved died. How would you feel then? Let me leave that with you because... There is always a possibility. You doing something like that is going to hurt you and come around to you. Karma will beat your ass. It could happen and don't think it can't. It's amazing how this world's connected. The dominoes, my friends, I've talked about it in former episodes, dominoes. So be careful because it might just come back and bite you in the ass really bad. So do yourself a favor, folks. Two words of advice I'm gonna give with TikTok. One, be careful what you put on there. Two, I wouldn't put it on any devices that you need a level of security on, okay? Your computer, your cell phone, your tablet, I would be very careful about installing an application on those devices. And I'm only speaking from, as I mentioned, working in the professional security industry, networking security, high-tech security. This is where I work in communications, surveillance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna get into details, but be very weary about what you install the TikTok application on and what devices you view TikTok on. 
my word of advice. And if you view it online through a web browser, make sure to use a VPN. Something that has a level of security that could scan for infiltration. Just a suggestion, but I highly recommend it. It might seem all innocent and fair and friendly and everything else, but from my professional experience, yeah, I would be weary about it. All right, so TikTok. It seems innocent, but it would be the last one on my list that I would actually give any credence to. But for some reason, it gets a whole bunch of traction because the young seem to like it. The young people seem to like it. They don't know any better because they're like sheeps to a shepherd. They follow the pack, unfortunately, the way it is. So that's TikTok. I'll give my advice on that one. Let's move on over to our last thing. Now, Pornhub, Pornhub, Pornhub. Yes. Guess what it's about? It's about porn. <laughs> now, here's the interesting thing about Pornhub. And here's where I'm going to share on this. So Pornhub is a Canadian-owned internet pornography website. It is one of several pornographic video streaming websites owned by MindGeek. Now, Pornhub was created. The video sharing website was launched in Montreal to provide a place for professional and amateur photography. It's called Pornhub, but yet they sell it as a place for professional and amateur photography. Since then, it grew to be one of the largest pornography sites on the web. The site was founded by web developer Matt Kieser. He first created it within the company called Interhub using PHP, MySQL, Sphinx, and Redis. In 2010, the company is acquired by Fabian, let's see if I get this last name right, uh, Thylemin, or Manwin, and later known as MindGeek. Interestingly enough, and hang over a second here. Da, 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 da. Where did I see that? No, it was just the Pornhub. Okay, so Pornhub is part of the Pornhub network, which consists of other porn sites, YouPorn, RedTube, and others. So it's a whole network. While Pornhub already holds the title as the one of the most popular pornographic websites, it's also the single largest adult website on the internet, hosting more than any other including its sister's sites in the Pornhub network. Okay, so here's the interesting thing about Pornhub, and this is where I'm going to get into this. This is where all that other trash should come to. This is where the OnlyFans sex workers and pornography should come to, Pornhub. And, of course, you know, any of the lewd streamers or quote-unquote, if you want to call them creators or content people, I put all the lewd stuff out there, like uh, the SMR, whatever you call it, and, you know, the, the nakedness and lewdness. It should all come to Pornhub. Now, here's the interesting thing. So, <laughs> and this is the interesting model for Pornhub. So once upon a time when the internet was created, of course, sex was there. Porn was there. And it was all pay sites. It was all pay sites, pay sites, pay sites, pay sites. If you want to see anything, want to see naked people, you have to pay. That was it. If you want to see naked people, you have to pay. And they were all over the place, all over the place. But you see, the model changed as the internet changed. Now it's just not a matter of paying to get through the front door. The model now is how many people are viewing. And that seems to be with sites like, okay, OnlyFans really doesn't have advertising. They have some, but mainly it's a paywall. Here's a sample. If you want to get in, you got to pay. So that's the old model. TikTok is all about, hey, how many people are viewing the stuff you put up here? Okay, excellent. So more people, you're more popular, people like you the most, we're going to give you advertisement. We're going to give you sponsorship deals. This is stuff we're going to give you. We're, we're going to sign you up because more people are looking at your content because obviously you're putting stuff up there that people are watching. So we want to put our ads in front of those people. So I think Pornhub saw this early enough and said, hmm, well... Why don't we just do this? Why don't we take that model and give out free porn and whoever makes the best porn and gets the most viewers, those are the people that get sponsorships and get the advertisements. And then of course, they'll offer a premium level. <laughs> Brilliant design, except now kids can have access to this without limitation unless there's some sort of security put on their internet access. What was good about the old model of a paywall for sex sites and nude sites and porn sites back in the early days of the internet for the first 20 years of the internet upwards until you know the early 2000s what was good about that is the paywalls kept the kids out you want to see naked naked people you have to have a credit card that means if you have a credit card chances are hey guess what you're an adult since you're an adult you're of age if you're an age great here you go give us money you can see boobies or whatever you want to see great awesome but now Pornhub is giving it out for nothing and we're just not talking innocent nakedness here we're talking the whole the whole kit and caboodle open-ended no paywall no security no door to prevent kids from going in on this and where that's great for those people that have 
uh, an addiction, a craving, a fetish that need that daily dose, dose of nakedness and sexual acts and all that stuff like that, Pornhub provides because it's not the viewer that's paying. It is, I mean, you could pay if you want the, the pro services, but it is how many people view the videos and who the content creators are that actually put up the videos. Those are the ones that get the sponsors. And of course, that's where the site makes its money through the advertisers. So you're not paying to actually see this stuff. People are making the stuff in order to get paid, blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Bottom line is it's free porn. If you're into that kind of thing, great, it's free porn. But my only concern is, is that, like I mentioned earlier about keeping kids safe on TikTok from doing stupid challenges, Pornhub should be regulated. Again, kids, innocent kids that don't know any better can stumble across this thing. And before you know it, they're getting an education that mommy and daddy never taught them about. And they're getting it just because they have internet access. And that's scary, folks. At least the paywalls back in the early days of the internet kept the nakedness and the porn away from little little minds and little eyes. But now Pornhub opens it up. It's a free-for-all, no paywall. Step on in, see anything you want to see. You don't have to prove your age. We'll let you have it for nothing. Well, of course, we'll put a warning up, say, if you're not 18, please leave. Honestly, what horny little 14-year-old boy is going to click, you know, no, I'm not 18? It's not going to happen. <laughs> they're, they're going to click. Yes, yes, I'm 18. I'm 18. Let me see some movies. You know, that's the thing. You're going to... It, it, it's so... It's stupid to put that, but they have to do it for legality reasons. They have to put, if you're not of age, please leave the site. I don't know if you realize, but like TikTok is the wild west of, you know, um, social media content without any rules and regulations. Pornhub is pretty much the same thing. There's no regulations, really. It's a free-for-all. It's a wild west of pornography and lewd acts. But at least you know when you go to Pornhub, you know what you're going to see. You're not going there to see Saturday morning cartoons. You're going there to see tit and ass and a whole bunch of lewd sexual acts. Hence the name Pornhub. Pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. What's misleading is you get the other sites like OnlyFans. That's misleading. Because baseball fans, sporting fans, musical fans... You know, fans of, of people in the in movies and TV shows, that should have its innocence and pornography and sex workers should stay out of that world. Come to Pornhub. Come to the Pornhub network. Put your your wares there. There's other sites too that give away. I mean, now everything's for free. And then unfortunately, even sites like uh, Chatterbaits. I know you're asking myself, you're asking, hey, Mad Morgan, how do you know about all this stuff? Well, you know, you can surf the web and you get hit with these advertisements. There is advertisements out there. There are bombarding people with this stuff. Hey, look at this, look at this, look at here. Oh yeah, check this out. Chatterbaits, unlike Pornhub, is basically, you know, you've heard of cam girls, you know, sex workers that get on, on a webcam and show the naughty bits and all that stuff like that. That's pretty much what Chatterbaits is. But here's the thing, again, no paywall. It's open with a little warning. It says, if you're not 18, please leave. And it's hundreds of people all looking for fame, all looking to suck people in and convince people that they should give them tips and give them money and do private shows for more money. Again, keep it behind a paywall. I have no problem with the sex industry or pornography. As long as people are doing it willingly by their own desire, because they want to, because they have to, but by their own decisions and not forced into it. I'm all for that part of the world to exist. Sex workers and pornography, I respect you. It's a hard job. It's fine. If you're doing it for the right reasons, because you have to, and you do it responsibly, great. More power to you, but keep it where it belongs. Keep innocent platforms like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and, and, and stuff along those lines. Keep them innocent. Um, what was it? Tumblr. Tumblr cracked down on this a while ago, years ago, banning all nudity on their platform because it was getting out of hand. It was it was bombarded by pornography and sex workers with tons of lewdness and tons of pornography and tons of nakedness. And they cracked down on it, started banning accounts, started taking off all that stuff off their platform. And now it's back to being innocent. It's back to being what it was meant to be. Social media for innocence for everyday, everyday people. Other platforms should do that too. Twitter should do that. Twitter allows nudeness and pornography. Oh, behind a, you know, don't click here or you're going to see stuff you probably don't want to see. Yeah, like that's going to stop somebody. But keep it where it belongs. OnlyFans, clean it up. Get rid of the nudity. There's other platforms for that. Make, make uh, I don't know, make a platform called Only Boobs. 
you know, instead of OnlyFans. At least that's not deceiving. At least you know you're going there for only boobs. All right? But OnlyFans, it's innocent. Get off that platform if you work in pornography or sex work. Come on. Leave something to the innocence and, and the positivity, the, the, the carefree days of, of not having to worry about all that other crazy stuff. You know, step away from those other platforms. Play in your own playground. Don't play in other playgrounds that are innocent. That's all I'm going to suggest to people that venture onto those areas. TikTok, just be careful about that. But as far as Pornhub, Pornhub, you might want to consider putting up some sort of age verification. You know, a lot of websites should be putting age verification of some level. This open door, free for all. It's no wonder why I see so much questionable behavior when it comes to today's youth, when it comes to the preteens and then teenagers going into their early 20s. They're all, their heads are rattled because of all this stuff that instant this, instant that. Oh, well, uh, just an overflow of information, an overflow of video and pictures and this and that. It's like nothing is in proportions anymore. Everything is just on demand right away in your face. Boom, 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 boom. We're just going to flood everything at you and then go from there. Honestly, moder <sighs> moderation is important. But as far as these platforms go, <sighs> come on now. All three of you have really got to rethink your policies, rethink your ways of doing things. Because there's a lot of innocent minds out there and people just want to have some fun, have a few laughs. Only fans, leave it for true fans. Leave it for true fans and content creators that want to make innocent, wholesome, meaningful type stuff. Keep the boobs off and the sex and pornography off those sites like that. TikTok, get some regulation. Monitor and govern and, and put some legality, legal precedents behind all this challenge bullshit that's hurting people. Police your platform. Clean it up for whatever your hidden agenda is on the, the backside, whatever. But clean it up. It's getting a bad rap. It's going to get a lot worse. And lastly, Pornhub, consider a paywall. And talk to Chatterbaits, get them to do a paywall too. I know it's easy money for you guys. You sit back and you don't even have to worry about content because other people create the content and put it all up there for you. It's just a great big money machine. I understand that. But you are hurting innocent minds. You are hurting the youth. You might want to keep it from their reach. Keep it in the reach of who is supposed to have it. If people have problems and addictions and all that stuff and need to, to partake in all this stuff, just keep it where it belongs, regulate it, keep people safe and, and out of harm's way. Come on, check your integrity. That's all I got to say. Because when I always ask you, how is your integrity today? Can you actually answer me honestly? What does integrity mean? Yeah, doing the right thing when no one's watching. And unfortunately, in today's world, everybody's watching. And especially these particular sites, a lot of people are watching. But are you doing the right thing? Are you being the change the world needs? That's the question. Unfortunately, it's all about the almighty dollar, isn't it? Money corrupts. Money is evil. It is. Hands down. I'm not going to argue. It is evil. It is corrupting. It tears away at the soul. It tears, tears away at the heart of things. And it's no good for anybody. We have to find a better way. But... I ask these sites, OnlyFans, TikTok, and Pornhub, how is your integrity? Can you sleep at the end of the day? I bet you could with your millions and millions of dollars of houses and money that's coming in. But how's your soul? How's your mental state at the end of the day? This is what you got to ask yourself. Can you rest knowing that you corrupted some young minds and really tarnished people's views on the world? Can you really? How's your legacy going to be? Ask yourself that. Okay, so... <laughs> I want to thank you very much for joining me today. I was very passionate about a lot of these topics when it comes to these particular issues, these particular sites. It's been bugging me for a while. I'm like, you know what? I got to throw it together in a show. And that's what I did today. So these are my views. These are my opinions. And not everybody's going to agree with me. But hey, send in your complaints. Send in your requests. Send in your feedback. I'd love to hear from it. You can reach me over at Mad Soapbox on, on Twitter. And also, hey, you can leave comments on all the platforms that we put. Make them constructive and positive. Don't make them toxic there's enough toxicity in the world enough toxic people enough nasty people enough keyboard warriors and trolls out there don't need that crap save it for somebody who cares because i really don't my goal as always make the world a better place one step at a time and that's why i'm here this is why we have the show you don't like it hey you know what get off my soapbox because it's my time to talk here's my show hey you know what 
Thank you again for joining me this week for another episode of Get Off My Soapbox. I'm your host, Matt Morgan. Please check out getoffmysoapbox.com. Please check us out over on Twitter at Mad Soapbox. And also, if you'd like to support the show, either share us on social media or something along those lines, but also Patreon. You're going to notice some support links actually on our website at getoffmysoapbox.com. You can either help us out with, with PayPal, Patreon. We have some tiers over there. Check that out as well. I think we actually have a Ko-Fi as well. You can find a lot of that information in our FAQ section on our website at getoffmysoapbox.com. If you want to have some answers to some of those questions, we do have a FAQ on the website, so check that out, getoffmysoapbox.com. Other than that, hey, Patreon slash getoffmysoapbox, you'll find what we have over there. So I'm going to wrap this up for this Wednesday. Thank you for joining me for another weekly episode of Get Off My Soapbox. It's been a pleasure having you here. For those that you listen to me daily, I will see you tomorrow morning for Soapbox Daily. Um, <laughs> for those joining me for every Wednesday for Get Off My Soapbox, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate you and thank you for being here as well. Other than that, I'm going to sign off. Have yourself a great rest of the day or whether it be evening, afternoon, or morning from wherever you're listening from take care of yourself keep your integrity in check be mindful of that and be the change the world needs all right i will see you next episode bye for now that's all for this episode of get off my soapbox podcast appreciate you tuning in today if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support the podcast please share it with others post it on social media or leave a rating and review to catch all the latest from mad morgan head over to getoffmysoapbox.com for links and details thank, thank, thank you for listening. for listening don't forget to follow so you don't miss the next episode